AI sits uh, really at the very core of everything we do. Uh, honestly, I mean, the business that we have, which is a, a very disruptive business in terms of um, bringing to the world of advertising, a new way to connect uh, with consumers uh, in content itself is built on AI. And, and let me just walk you through a little bit the sort of the, the key steps uh, that are involved here starting with the ingestion process where we we pull a, a piece of video it can be anything we're absolutely agnostic in these terms um, and and then you know there's algorithms running over the content to to identify first of all what i like to call them in the first phase the insertion possibilities so just think of it a video and the algorithms identify empty spaces a bus whatever where, where you know, uh, the, the, the idea is really to place brands or advertising into that uh, identified uh, insertion possibility in the video content, which can be a movie or a television series or whatever. And then the second level um, is really about the contextual intelligence. So now you refine the, 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 how can I say, the physical possibility of an insertion, you refine it to make it meaningful, right? Does this make sense for the cosmetics brands? I've identified a table or empty space or whatever. Is that good for a cosmetics brand or, or would that be, you know, more suitable or both for alcoholic beverages? And, and that's sort of the second layer of intelligence that runs over it. And, and so, so this is really, at the absolute core of what we do. And then the second phase, uh, similarly, it's all about, you know, very refined techniques. And this, as you will imagine, much, much more involved to our business um, to, to then process the images, right? Automatically to render them and, and to create multiple versions of a same uh, scene. And, and, and this is interesting when you think about, you know, there was a very good headline uh, UC Pepsi, IC Coke uh, in the New York Times uh, some time ago when they were writing about our business, um, where you realize that actually a scene as you're watching a television series, etc., cetera, or, or anything else uh, can be modified according you know, to, the, to the audience that is watching it. So, so we need to prepare the content as such uh, uh, so that we can have different versions that can be play out, played out uh, to different audiences or different geos, et cetera. And to do this at scale requires very, very heavy uh, algorithmic capabilities, which we have. And I could go on for a long, long time. So it's, it's, it's really, you know, in our case, I would say um, the whole disruption that we bring to the market is actually based on AI because otherwise you would not be able to do it. You cannot put, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of people analyzing, you know, hours and hours of content and then within the content going in, in like really understanding, oh, we could put something in there. What have you seen? It's, it's just unimaginable how you would resolve that. So I would say that it's not really about you know, adding value, uh, AI is not adding value uh, to a business, it is actually the business in itself. It's it, the foundation of the business is AI. So, so the, the, you know, the, the, the AI or the machine learning algorithms that we, we own and we have developed, uh, really go across, um, I should say, the entire spectrum of, of um, you know, of our stack, of our platform. And, and there, are, there are a few areas where, you know, it's worthwhile highlighting really the capability in terms of, um, you know, the, the entire analytics process um, is, is something that has no start and no finish. So we will get more and more sophisticated and more sophisticated and more sophisticated. This is about training the models, etc., adding new ideas, new concepts, right, to the AI to, to refine the capability. So just think of it, you know, in the future, um, that's our vision that we want to create brand algorithms. In other words, we want to be in a position that, you know, two luxury brand, uh, car manufacturers eventually will be competing uh, because they have 
um, you know, refined algorithms for their very, very specific brand positionings, audience addressability, etc., and will be optimizing uh, for their very specific requirements or their beliefs and what they measure and track uh, in terms of what performs best for their purpose. So that part, I would say, is really um, yeah, that's that's a big, big heartbeat, I should say, in terms of you know where the AI uh, really emerges as as the absolutely dominant uh, component. There are other areas when you think about you know um, ingesting the content as such. That's a how can I say? I shouldn't say it's a mechanical thing. There's some automated or a lot of automation happening there, but it's not necessarily where you would say that there's AI. So, so really on the integration side, I think um, these are, these are you know, very common practice integration points via API, where there's not a lot of machine learning involved at, at that heavy level, right? So I, I would really say that this whole analytics part, then the entire sort of mapping, matting, uh, rendering part, there's a lot of machine learning involved there. And then further on, we will see as we, as we exploit our platform to make it available to, you know, to the outside world, so to say, in a self-service configuration, as we make it available uh, in the programmatic buying ecosystem, then we will see how these things will evolve. There's certainly some more layers that will come. Um, including, by the way, uh, our entire development in the live space. In other words, where we are processing live uh, imagery coming from, let's just say, from sports games or, you know, game shows or reality television uh, in live formats, uh, music and, and concerts and things like that. There will be uh, some additional, um, you know, challenges that we need to resolve. So the challenges um, we, we face um, when, you know, when, when tackling uh, you know, the, the, the solutions that we need to develop um, based on, on machine learning and AI, um, I guess, you know, they're all pr pretty common, uh, common challenges everybody has who's involved in that. It's like, how do you best train the models? Where do you get, you know, some some uh, libraries that you could pull from and, and you know utilize to train your models etc cetera, etc cetera. so these are i should say uh, very common yeah challenges everybody has so there's nothing uh, particular i would like to call out um, other than that then beyond that there's obviously because we are a very very unique application and uh, you know think of us as as being the, the real leaders in that new space of in content advertising. So in a way you can say everything we do um, is, is new, it has never been done before. So there's a huge level of really thinking about the concepts first and, and then really understanding how you will execute against that. And so, so yeah, I mean, you know, how can I say there's not, no one rule of thumb in terms of how these challenges uh, play out and how difficult they are. We're obviously taking things step by step, like you would always do. Um, but I would say that you know, also the um, you know having our, how can I say our applications running in the cloud, for instance, that's something because we are so unique is something that is specifically challenging for us. So there's not much we can rely on. It actually needs to be done by our teams. Uh, that that's a very very good question, and and I, you know, w one way I'd like to answer the the question about how real is AI or machine learning is really this this very simple thought: Could you theoretically solve it with a spreadsheet and and eventually programming some macros to to run that? And if that's the case, then eventually, yeah. Uh, Either you, you, you don't necessarily need AI or maybe it is not that, that deep and that intense. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's the one thing, but I, I think the, so there's the aspect of the, how can I say that the quantity of data and the diversity of the data that you're uh, manipulating or that you're basically processing. But then 
of course, there's sort of this this idea of um, you know self self learning and and basically optimizing and not through human beings, but it's basically the models that that get better and better the more you apply. And I think that's something where you can clearly, when you think about it, uh, when you look at an application or a solution, and, and you ask yourself, is is that actually really happening or not right and in our case um, i can say it is happening because the systems know every day uh, you know one more step further in terms of understanding um you know is, is this is this scene uh, better suited for this kind of brand or that kind of brand and within that scene would it be best placed here or best placed there these are all things that when you think about optimizing what you deliver uh, as a business, I think, you know, where the AI is, is you know, th th there's no other way to do it. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's what I can say in terms of the answer. Um, it, clearly, the term has been used just like big data as well, as, as you will all remember many years ago. Uh, it, it's a buzzword, right? And it, it's very often, used as as a little bit of a marketing paint and you know in, in areas where you you realize that uh, as i said earlier right eventually spreadsheet would do the job uh, it just sounds a bit more uh, attractive to call it ai but you 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 can tell uh, when businesses are actually really leveraging ai um, because they're you know utilizing all these massive amounts of very different data uh, unstructured data, and then eventually that's not doable in the spreadsheet. So, in terms of the the, the skills and the workforce, uh, I'd like to let's think of it in, in two ways. Number one is our internal workforce, right? And and clearly, and the skills that we need to have. Um, as we develop our business and our platform further, we will need to have more people. And, and we will have to add more and more expertise without a doubt. Uh, the challenge there, of course, is where do you, you know, where do we get the talent from? Uh, partly, um, you know, it's talent that we recruit at a young age uh, from the universities, etc., and then then skill them up. So we are actually uh, doing this quite a lot. Um, there's a different, not different, additional or complementary um, uh, strategy that we have. We have a, a company also based in India, and there's obviously a lot of talent there as well. So we can scale up in India quite nicely. So, so that's that challenge. Probably nothing very particular, but 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 clearly, you know, it, the talent is very high in demand and. And so everybody's uh, trying to get the best, but I think one good recipe and here again plays a huge role that we do something so, so specific. Um, I think is, is that, you know, we train our own people a lot. Uh, and fortunately, we are also dealing with a very, very fascinating uh, piece of technology in our world that, you know, as such, um, is, is attractive for many people. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's easy for us to find talent, but, but certainly we get get very, very good people. Um, the second aspect is about the workforce um, that is not the myriad workforce. In other words, those who actually leverage our technology in our platform. And so think of this now as we, as we look into the future where um, agencies, advertising agencies, creative agencies, content agencies, media agencies, and so forth, eventually log and clients advertisers log into the Myriad platform and they will be able to do things themselves, right? Um, and and so this could go, or this, the ideas or the plan is to actually allow them to uh, look into the inventory and, you know, make media plans and so forth, and then run campaigns, and then eventually at some point also uh, do the creative work and, and control the creative work as well. And the secret here is in terms of, uh, you know, what is the task here at hand and what is the challenge for us? It, it, we, need to, we need to deliver a solution that is literally plug and play uh, from, you know, from the other side's perspective. So it needs to be for somebody who's acquainted and used to buying media, planning media, et cetera. It needs to be 
you know, fully compatible with the mindset and with the expertise and practice uh, of, of that audience. And the same applies to, uh, you know, the, the talent that will be using the platform to eventually, uh, you know, control some of the creative delivery. Uh, it needs to be suitable for the creatives. Um, a long way to say that our job, or we will do our job well, if the AI is actually delivering phenomenal results if the AI is, is delivering a phenomenal experience because it's, you know, things are just mouse clicks away or actually fully automated. And then we will have, to, we will have done a great, great job. So I think that the, the trend there is actually more about reducing uh, the requirements from a skill set uh, standpoint on the, on the user's uh, level. Uh, rather than, uh, you know, skilling anybody up. So it's actually really the opposite. That's our people who need to make sure that things get easier and easier to use.